Okay, welcome. I'm going to get started. So thank you so much for attending today's webinar on SimSolid Cloud. Uh, my name is Drew Buchanan. I'm the engineering manager here at True Insight. I'm just going to kick off uh, a poll right now. So if you have time, feel free to answer it. That would be great. Um, so firstly, um, if you're unfamiliar with Altair uh, and True Insight, True Insight is the channel partner for Altair. And Altair, uh, what they're doing is really allowing designers and engineers to leverage simulation, HPC, and AI to, to come up to with better enterprise decision making. So specifically today, we're going to be talking during the webinar about SimSolid Cloud, which is a physics-based simulation tool. But bear in mind, one of the things that's unique about Altair uh, is it gives you uh, there's a lot of different solutions available. Uh, specifically, you know, they're not regulated to just physics simulation. They can also, you know, fall into data analytics, uh, design modeling, or even IoT. So, uh, my colleagues going to be monitoring the chat as I go through this webinar. If you do have any specific questions um, related to uh, SimSolid Cloud or any other application, just let us know. Um, and I always like to throw this up there. You know, you may have a solution that you know maybe. Uh, might not be covered by SimSolid Cloud, but you probably have some type of solution available within the Altair portfolio. Um, great. So our agenda today, uh, first we'll kind of just go over an overview of SimSolid Cloud. Um, maybe some of you are familiar with SimSolid Desktop, maybe some of you aren't. So we'll talk about um, what SimSolid Cloud is versus traditional FEA. Uh, then we'll actually go through some demonstrations and then you know jump in some modules. Like I said, my colleague is in the chat. So as I'm going through this, if you have questions, he should be able to respond to them. Um, but I will save some time at the end of this presentation if you do wanna have some sp uh, specific questions as we're going through this. So let's kind of talk about um, what exactly SimSolid Cloud is. Um, specifically, SimSolid Cloud is a full structural solver um, it is backed by NAFEMS, but it utilizes a different numerical technique, which we're going to talk about in a few slides. Um, the difference versus you know, SimSolid Desktop, which has been available for a while, is cloud is fully web-based, so it can be set up on you know, a web browser regardless of your system specifications, and it's also solved via that web browser as well. So gives you that kind of ability to, you know, maybe you're working on a tablet or, you know, you're traveling and you don't have maybe your, your home machine, you can actually solve accordingly. With that also being said, it's still very powerful. So you can still utilize your own kind of, you know, laptop, desktop machine. Maybe you just want, like to be working in a cloud environment that gives you that, that capability as well. A couple other things to keep in mind with SimSolid Cloud. Um, like desktop, um, SimSolid Cloud does not utilize a traditional, um, nodal de a degree of freedom approach. What that means is if you've ever looked at FEA, FEA traditionally discretizes a system by elements. And um, not, you know what that means is traditionally FEA, if you have more elements, it can take very long to solve. So it tends to, you know, it can be very, you know, uh, cumbersome to solve a very large assembly, or even a maybe it's a small part, but it has very complicated geometry, like maybe it's a lattice part. Uh, SimSolid, uh, does not utilize a, a DOF, DOF approach like FEA. So it can actually solve problems very quick. And we will actually see that as we work through uh, today's webinar. Uh, like I said previously, the, the pre-processing, the post-processing and all the solving is done on the cloud. So we will actually go through that uh, in a moment. Um, and then as far as structural capabilities, uh, we have, you know, full kind of structural capabilities. We have modal analysis, uh, linear static and nonlinear static, as well as thermal. And this would be, you know, heat transfer and also uh, coupled uh, thermal analysis, which we'll go through. So a couple things that are, you know, one of the things that's, you know, really, really cool about SimSolid is it allows users to overcome things that are traditionally very difficult to do in FEA. Maybe you've had some exposure to FEA or maybe you've never jumped into FEA because of just the, um, maybe some, some fear of having to actually discretize or set up a domain. Because we're utilizing a different approach within SimSolid, it can overcome things that are traditionally very difficult to do in FEA. First being, a, it would be a part gap or an overlap. 
one of the things within SimSolid um, is we can actually have interferences in parts, and then we can actually still kind of solve the system. Traditional FEA, you have to have, make sure uh, parts are coincident, uh, unless you're doing like a press fit application. But um, in general, you want to make sure you're kind of avoiding any gaps or uh, overlaps. And in SimSolid, we can overcome that. Some of the other things that are really, really cumbersome to do in FEA is maybe you're working with like a, a heat exchanger or something that has a lot of different types of parts. What I mean by that would be thin and, and thick parts. Um, when you start having very different uh, thickness uh, parts, you have to actually have kind of an expertise in meshing to know when to assign a small uh, element thickness and, and a large element thickness to make sure you're not running a system for a very long time. You don't have to do that in SimSolid because you're not actually generating a mesh. And so um, you can kind of overcome this uh, very efficiently. And some of these other things like uh, small geometry features and then also like, like splinter surfaces, um, because you're you're looking at the overall volume within SimSolid, you can overcome and 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 solve these these types of problems very easily. Versus in traditional FEA, you'd be spending a lot of time trying to get a good good sized mesh, if you're even able to get a good mesh like that splinter surface sh shown on the screen. It would be very very difficult to do that. Um, and then lastly, like I mentioned previously, like if you have you know, maybe uh, geometric complexity, whether it's a very large assembly or um, something like, like this lattice uh, brake caliper, this would be something that would be very hard to mesh and in SimSolid it can be done in a breeze. So um, I encourage you, if you do have questions about it, I'm happy to answer some more questions at the end. Um, SimSolid is fully benchmarked uh, by NAFEMS. It's just a, a slightly different numerical formulation in terms of the integration that's happening in the background. Um, and here are a couple key points. Um, you know, the, the key thing is when you look at SimSolid is you're looking at regions, um, specifically volume-based regions, um, and the degrees of freedom are not point-wise, they're associated with a volume. So as a result, um, you're still going through kind of the equation of motion, you know, um, it's just going through a different numerical calculation. And as a result, um, the shape functions that are generated uh, allow you to kind of solve the system much more efficiently than you, and than you would in traditional FEA. So one of the things, you know, one of the last things I wanna point out here is this is something that, you know, having worked as an analyst for a while um, and, received models from CAD designers, interferences or gaps have been things I've had to deal with my whole career. And, you know, depending on what your company's workflow and environment are, uh, you may not actually be able to edit those CAD models. I know I worked for a company where we had to kind of go through a workflow whenever a change was happening, or you might work somewhere small where you have to edit it, but maybe you're not familiar with the CAD tool. Long story short, it can be very cumbersome um, because in traditional FEA, you have to kind of apply a coincident face. But see, in this application, SimSolid's actually able to kind of overcome all of these, these difficulties. So like this part overlap here, you see how it's applying the actual connection that's being applied. Uh, maybe kind of a, a kind of a bad kind of contact face here where there's a little bit of at overlap, it's still applying the proper connection. And then he, even here where there's a gap between the part, um, and this is kind of exaggerated so you can show it, but sometimes you may have really small gaps that you may not be aware of. And in traditional FEA that will generally cause issues in SimSolid, we can overcome those issues. So it really allows you to kind of set these problems up very quickly and get a solution very, very, very quickly. All right, so let's jump into a kind of a quick overview of SimSolid Cloud um, for those of you who haven't stepped into it. So let me uh, minimize my screen here. And I'm gonna bring over my browser over here. So a couple things to point out with SimSolid Cloud. Um, I'm working within Chrome. You could work within whatever browser you wanna work in. Um, but you see right here, if I wanna launch the application right here, I can actually launch the application accordingly. Um, I already have, so actually let's uh, restart the application. Um, the other thing that, that's cool about SimSolid, part of having a SimSolid cloud license is it gives you access to a cloud drive via Altair One. So that's this drive right here. And currently you have part of a license, you have up to a terabyte of data. So you see right here, this is where my SimSolid cloud folder is located. Um, so let me 
you know, re-log in here and let me re-sign in accordingly. All right, great. So once I'm signed in here, you'll see that the actual desktop browser is set up like this. Um, and you know, uh, you'll see there's a kind of a, a a dashboard on the left. So the left, this, this dashboard here will show you all existing projects. Um, as we kind of get work our way through this webinar, you'll actually see these projects start to populate with the different project fire, files accordingly. One of the other things that's really nice is if I click on the gear option right here, you can spe you know, specify um, your face faceting. So when you're actually importing a CAD file, um, if you have a very complex uh, geometry, like an example, it'd be a lattice, you can actually adjust the resolution in terms of what it's importing in. So this is your chordal deviation in terms of when it's looking at those edges. So that's one of the nice features. You can bring this in um, and you can actually specify, you know, a, a, like a really complex kind of faceted file you can bring in accordingly. We see our appearance options right here. Um, so this is kind of what our standard views are gonna look at and how, you know, you can adjust your mouse sensitivity in the browser. We can change that accordingly. We go to our units tab right here. We have our SI and IPS. And the other thing is we can actually change these units on the fly as we're going through this. And I'll actually show that as I go through a couple examples, which is nice. Um, we can also change our decimals for output. And then again, um, we can see all our, our units right here uh, in terms of changes. Um, and then there's our actual uh, solution browser here, which we can adjust. Um, I'm not going to get into that today, but it's again pointing to what I talked about earlier in terms of the convergence within SimSolid. It gives you the ability to actually apply uh, different um, adaptive solutions. It's very similar to adaptive meshing, but it's a different kind of technique because it's a different numerical formulation, but it gives you the ability to kind of make sure your solutions are, are matching up with uh, you know what you expect them to. Uh, our controls are nice. Um, Currently, we have mouse controls enabled for, you know, you know if you want to change to Onshape or SolidWorks, um, you can do that, or we can work off of the SimSolid, which all works kind of by your mouse button, you know, left mouse button drag, uh, right mouse button is a pan and zoom, zooming in and out. And then there's also a material database here, which you can actually add this library and have it in the browser itself. Okay, great. So let's actually start kind of a simple project. I'll go through a couple things in terms of setup within SimSolid Cloud. So if I click add project right here, it's gonna divert us to our Alter One drive. Um, this is where we store all of our data. And like I already point, pointed out, you'll see I have these folders on my Alter One drive and the drive can be accessed by the Alter One marketplace. So like I said, you get a terabyte of data uh, part of SimSolid uh, Cloud. So if I come here to my subfolders here, I can actually access my SIM solid projects. And one of the things that you're you're typically importing into SIM cloud, SIM solid cloud um, are CAD data, and then you set up the projects. So you'll see right here, uh, we pretty much all the, the, the various file formats out there we can bring in. In this case, most of these are actually Parasolid, but if you're working within SolidWorks or Autodesk or Katia, what have you, uh, we can bring those files in accordingly. So I'm gonna click on this Parasolid and then hit open. All right, so you'll see as this starts to load, um, you'll see the model kind of loading down here at the bottom. It, this is all being done within my browser. Um, and that's kind of the cool thing. It brings in the entire model. So a couple cool things that are really neat about this is I can pan around, I can move right and left, and this is all being done on the cloud. This is not using any kind of system specs. Obviously, it's dependent on your network latency, what have you, but um, the servers themselves are, are uh, very quick. So that's one of the really cool things about this. So we'll step through this process of this model. So the first thing you'll see is when a project starts, you'll see that you have a model tree on the left kind of set up here where it shows your assembly, your connections, and then the analyses. So if you've ever worked with SimSolid before or seen it before, um, one of the things that SimSolid is very good at is automating connections um, because it, it, it can do this through kind of the, the volume-based approach. One of the things we can specify here is we can specify our materials. 
Um, I can do it by kind of doing a shift select if I want and grab a couple materials at once, or I can do the whole assembly. In this case, I'm just going to kind of keep things fairly um, straightforward for this first model. And I'm going to right click and hit set material for the entire assembly. So part of SimSolid Cloud is you have an integrated material database that's part of it. But like I mentioned, you can actually adjust this material database or you know kind of edit things accordingly. So you see right here um, for our materials, it has our Young's modulus, our thermal expansion coefficient, all the things that we would need for running you know linear statics, modal analysis, nonlinear statics, and thermal analysis. So if I hit apply, what you'll then see is you'll see because I applied it to the entire assembly, um, everything is highlighted in orange. If I left if I left mouse button click on the screen, it will you know de de deactivate everything, and you'll have kind of that gray image showing up. And you'll see in my actual part list right here, everything is des designated as steel. Now keep in mind, if I want to change one of these, I can I I can right click and I can hit set material, and maybe I'll change this to nickel. Uh, so you can kind of see right there that that got changed uh, accordingly to nickel, that end cap. Again, I, I want to keep everything kind of set as steel, but I just want to keep in mind that you can have multiple materials applied, which is the realistic application when you guys are actually dealing with your assemblies. A couple other things that are nice about the display options in the browser. Um, maybe I want to be working on color. I can show colors if I want. Um, I can show parts uh, you know, as translucent. The other kind of cool thing about this is within SimSolid Desktop, there is a bunch of kind of keyboard shortcuts. They have all been brought over into the browser version. So what I mean by that, if I click on a, a part right here, I can actually click on my keyboard and hit I, and that will actually isolate and have the, the keyboard showing. If I hit A, it's gonna bring everything back. Note, I can also access this by mouse button click, so right mouse button, and I can see all these keyboard shortcuts enabled here, which is pretty neat um, for a web-based solution to actually have keyboard shortcuts enabled. I think that's pretty cool. So let's jump to our connections option right here. So like I said, this is really one of the really cool things about SimSolid is the ability to kind of automate the connections and, and make really setting these problems up very quickly. So this is, you know, it's not a, a small assembly, I mean, it's not a huge assembly, but it's also not necessarily a small assembly either. There's a number of parts, it's a pull up bar. Um, there's uh, fasteners, uh, there's brackets, various types of uh, part thicknesses. So it is something that would probably take some time to set up in traditional FEA. Um, also for applying connections, it would take you know some time to do that. So if I actually hit add here and hit automatically, this is one of the really cool things about SimSolid is it, it utilizes a gap tolerance and a penetration tolerance. So this is kind of what I was showing in my PowerPoint deck earlier, that if you have the ability, uh, if you have gaps or interferences, SimSolid can overcome these and then actually apply an appropriate connection. So if I hit find, you'll see right down here, one of the other things to keep in mind with kind of the UI of, of some solid cloud is it will show you as it's going through these calculations in real time at the bottom, kind of saw that creating connections. And then the other really cool thing about this is we're, we're not limited to just a bonded connection. So bonded being like a, a glued or welded connection. You'll see that for the actual fasteners right here. Um, so if I pan up, it automatically applied a sliding connection. Um, this is much like how the desktop tool functions. When you start applying fasteners or uh, face connections, it'll automatically recognize the bolts and then apply the appropriate connections accordingly. Um, I can also right click on these and I, and I can actually you know, edit the default contact condition. I can change this to sliding or even separating if I'm running a nonlinear analysis. So it gives you a kind of uh, appropriate connections um, to kind of make sure you're setting up your system accordingly. Okay, great. So we've applied our connections. Our our final step here, and that's the other kind of cool thing about this browser, is it keeps things kind of like you work your way from top to bottom on this browser. So the first thing is defining our materials, bringing in our assembly. The second step is applying our connections. And then um, we go to our analysis step right here, and we specify the type of study. So like I already mentioned, within SimSolid Cloud, um, we have linear, nonlinear, modal, and thermal. Note with desktop, you actually have a couple of additional modules. So if you're curious about vibrations or buckling, 
or fatigue, you can have those within desktop. But from a cloud-based application, these actually there's a good bit of tools here, which are, are fa fairly nice. So I'm gonna run a linear static application here. And you'll see that I, I really only have two steps. Because SimSolid does not utilize a, I don't have to create a mesh, really all I have to do is apply my constraints. So how am I, I am gonna be restraining my part and then also apply my loads, which are, you know, in this case, it's gonna, it's a pull up bar. So it's gonna be the forces on these ends. So let's click on our constraints option. And you'll see that we have a number of constraints built into the cloud browser. Immovable meaning that it's gonna be restrained in the X, Y, and Z. A slider, it's gonna be restrained, um, you know, just in one direction, but allowing sliding movement. Hinge would be kind of a rotational based fixture. And then a, a string support would actually allow you to apply an elastic support. So keying in a stiffness value. In our case, we're going to just apply these uh, an immovable support on these back brackets. And note, I can apply these to faces or spots. Spots would be like if you have kind of a, like a, just a small location on this face. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about spots, but if you have questions about it, it just allows you to, you know, maybe I don't wanna apply the fixture or a force to the entire face. I can utilize the spot tool to kind of apply that accordingly. All right, so you'll see once I actually apply uh, the constraint, you'll see it, it shows up on my tree right here. Um, you know, I can right click and hit edit to go back if I wanna change it. So you always have the capability to edit, you know, these values within SimSolid uh, Cloud. Um, and you can also, you know, click on the three periods here if you need to delete it accordingly. Um, great. So a couple other things to keep in mind, um, you know, you can, on the display options themselves, you'll note when I click on loads, that disappears. So that boundary condition itself is disappearing. But if I always want to have them showing up, I get it show boundary conditions checked. And even though I'm not active on that boundary condition, it shows it, you know, it shows up. It's up to you. It's not really going to impede performance. It's really just do you want to have a, all the boundary conditions showing or not? I typically don't like them showing just because I like to kind of keep things kind of clear, but just keep in mind you can visualize that accordingly. All right, so let's go to our loads option now. If we go to loads right here, this is the other really cool thing for a cloud-based uh, simulation tool. It has pretty much every type of load you would need, you know, and even some really, really kind of complicated loads for, you know, analysis. So things like inertia loads, uh, preloads uh, for bolts, and even remote loads or distributed masses, as well as hydrostatic pressure or bearing loads. So a lot of kind of, you know, kind of custom-based loads, they're built into the cloud-based tool, which is nice. In this case, it's just gonna be a force um, it's going to be on these two faces here. Um, and then I can specify uh, my units. In this case, I'm going to utilize English units. And in this case, I'm going to be in the Z direction. So the X, Y, and Z work of the global triad here in the corner. And I'm going to say a negative Z value of, I don't know, let's do like negative 300 pounds. And hit OK. And you'll see since I'm active on it, it's showing the actual boundary condition and that corresponds with the right direction here and the Z direction. All right, great. So at this point, the model's already set up. We can actually solve it. And note, I don't have to save everything. Everything's already automatically being saved to the project. So I don't have to hit file save. I'm, I'm kind of good to go. I can just hit solve and then I can run the study accordingly. So again, keep in mind, I'm solving this on the cloud and it's, you know, even for a cloud-based tool, um, it solves really, really quick. You know, like I think that's one of the things when SimSolid came out on the desktop tool, people really loved. It's still embracing that on the cloud-based application. It solves these systems very quickly. You don't have to mesh and you can kind of get these solutions, you know, very, very quickly. So uh, the post-processing itself is also very handy. Um, uh, we can kind of see right here, uh, I can change the type of color. So kind of our scale here on the right, if I go, the default is going to be at like six. I click on 12. Um, I can also change kind of the uh, shape right here to be smooth. I can turn on the min max automatically or turn that off to know what, what's happening. So I'm looking at the displacement plot right here. I can change my units on the fly here so I can see what my max displacement is. 
And this is also showing you kind of a, I can animate this result. And this is showing me what I'd expect. Remember, I'm fixing these back brackets and I'm applying a Z for. So this is kind of what I expect to see. But bear in mind, if I uncheck this um, show deformed shape, it's going to show the true scale. So this is actually kind of the realistic kind of approach. It's not much displacement for a 300 pound force. It's, you know, 0.1 inches at the max, and that's just at the tips. Uh, the cool thing about this too is if I am showing the deformed shape, I can actually adjust the scale factor. So if you're really trying to visualize what's happening to a result, you can visualize that accordingly, which is nice. Um, I can also adjust the legend here. So maybe I want to see everything that's at, um, let's say everything that's at uh, 0.07, hit apply bounds. You see how it changed the scale accordingly? That's another really cool thing is I can change my scales um, and have kind of a, you know, everywhere that's at a specific value. The other thing that's nice, um, there's a number, everything you'd want for a linear static analysis here. So von Mises stress, I can change this. Um, I even have a safety factor plot. So where, you know, things I might want to change or adjust within my system. Um, and then kind of all the kind of the normal and, and principal stress values I have as well. The other thing that's nice on the result tab is you'll note that I had a number of bolts that were brought in. So SimSolid's algorithm automatically recognizes bolts and applies the appropriate connections for you. And you'll see right here that I can actually look at the bolt nut forces. So if I click on the bolt, it's going to tell me what the axial force and the shear force is, as well as the bending moment. You know, typical things that, you know, you as a designer are checking to make sure, hey, I'm not going above this bolt's limit. If I had a preload or a nut, I could also check the nut. In this case, it's just a bolt um, within the system. But the other thing that's really cool is I can also check my reaction force, something that I, I'm guessing a lot of you guys probably do to check your analyses to make sure everything makes sense. If I click on the actual support, it's going to show me what my reaction force is and the X, Y, and Z, as well as the moments. Um, I can also then take a look at the connection forces. So if I just click on these connections, you'll see how it becomes highlighted and I can actually see what those connection forces are, which is nice. Um, and if I had welds in my system, I would be able to apply these accordingly. The other thing that's nice about this is that if, as I'm going through each of these, these values, um, there is a nice kind of integrated help. If I hit this kind of question mark right here, uh, you'll have the ability to kind of it's an in-context help. So remember, I was looking at reaction forces. So I hit the question mark. It will tell me what, exactly what's what's going through, you know, this specific part. So the nice thing about this tool, it's a fairly fairly user intuitive tool. Um, but if there's something you don't understand, there is in-context help. You can click on and find it appropriately. All right. So let's hop back to my slide deck here. So we talked about kind of the overview. I think the other thing that's really nice about SimSolid Cloud and it's impossible to, to cover everything in a webinar, but there's multiple solutions. Um, and we'll take a look at a couple of advanced solutions. So one thing that typically has always taken a long time to solve in traditional FEA is modal analysis. So modal analysis being an object's natural tendency to oscillate, um, you know, you're solving for those resonant frequencies. It's not uncommon to be, you know, you know, you're running a modal analysis in traditional FEA and it might take, you know, overnight runs or I've worked on cases where in, in you know previous jobs where it would run up to like 20, 24 hours on a non-HPC based machine. SimSolid allows users to be able to solve modal analysis very quickly and you're also solving it in the cloud, which is nice. So we'll look at a modal analysis example, which is pretty neat. Um, and we'll also take a look at a thermal analysis uh, result. Remember SimSolid is, is based around kind of the FEM based approach. It's not a CFD tool. Uh, so keep in mind how you apply convection is you click on a face and apply convection coefficients. Um, it, you know, it's not a, you know, you're not solving like a CFD based approach, but it's still, because it's using a FEM based approach, it can be very quick to solve thermal analysis. So we'll actually look at an example as well for thermal analysis. Uh, connections, we kind of touched on this, but you have a number of advanced connections and you, you leverage the ability to kind of apply these connections automatically, which is one of the really cool things about SimSolid. Our boundary conditions, there's a number of advanced boundary conditions. Uh, so you're not limited to just kind of a basic kind of fixed restraint. You can really kind of customize and set up your systems to be very uh, you know, realistic to what you're actually running uh, for your parts in reality. 
And then there's a really nice kind of post processor built into SimSolid Cloud. So let's kind of take a look at you know a couple other examples here uh, within our browser. So if I want to go back to my dashboard here, that's the kind of the cool thing about it. You'll see when I actually created this project, it's going to kind of give you a quick preview of the actual part, um, the author. So uh, you know who who created this. Um, and then uh, when it was created at. So it kind of is acting as like a PLM system. So I, I know when it was last modified, who last modified it, and when it was initially created, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna add another project here. Um, we're gonna look at a modal analysis. So I'm gonna bring in this part here. And you'll see as it starts to load right here at the bottom, it's always an indicator of, you know, kind of this is the model loading in real time, which is pretty neat. All right, so what we have right here is kind of a, a kind of a grain silo. Grains pouring down at the bottom. One of the things you'll you'll kind of keep in mind of this is we have some thin wall parts. Think about this if you're trying to traditionally mesh this in FEA. The other thing is the the actual taper or thickness of the cone itself is very thin. Um, this would be you know something that would take time to set up and mesh in traditional FEA, uh, and we're going to kind of set up start from scratch and then run a modal analysis and you'll actually be able to see these results in real time. So first thing we do, like I, I mentioned in the previous model is we need to apply our material. Um, let's just do a different material here. I'm just gonna say aluminum. Um, again, we talked about if you wanted to apply different connections, you could. Uh, we're just gonna kind of keep everything as aluminum. Uh, our connections here, Automatically, so there's another option if I actually, you know, if I don't want to use automatic, automatic's looking globally, but if I wanted to apply a manual connection, I could. If I click on between specific parts, I just have to click the parts I want. So just keep in mind, you, you have the ability to kind of apply manual contacts. I think the thing that makes SimSolid very nice is this automatic uh, contact uh, creation tool. So that's why I'm, that's what I'm gonna be typically using today in this webinar, but you have manual contact connections available. Uh, so we'll use this. I think there's a couple gaps in here, so they're still pretty minimal. Um, so I'm just going to increase our tolerance up here to three. And like I mentioned, this is kind of the beauty of SimSolid is if you have large gaps or large penetrations, you can overcome these with uh, SimSolid. If I hit find, it's going to go through this and it's going to create these connections accordingly. Um, it's a little bit larger assembly. There's actually a number of parts here uh, versus the... Uh, uh, pull up bar, but you see it kind of creates those connections automatically for us, which is uh, again very handy and it does that all automatically. So if we go to our analysis option here, I'm going to instead of clicking on linear, I'm going to click on modal. So the thing with modal analysis um, that you know uh, typically that's really important um, is you need to specify the number of modes. And if you're really concerned about modal analysis, you're probably you know, thinking about the rigid body modes. These would be the modes associated with your fixtures. And typically, if you're looking at the, the translational and rotational uh, degrees of freedom, uh, that's why I'm, I'm gonna capture six, degree, uh, six modes. So that translational X and you know, rotational X uh, all the way through X, Y, and Z. So I'm gonna have six modes. Um, after I apply the number of modes, and, and bear in mind, you're not limited by six modes. I know some of you may be running you know, up to an, a certain operating frequency. Maybe you're running modal analysis for a motor. You could have a number of modes. You're not limited by six in SimSolid. You can go up to whatever mode uh, you want. Um, so in our case, I'm gonna apply my loads and constraints right here. So um, in our case, I'm gonna only apply an immovable support because this is a silo that's sitting on the ground and these are bolted to the ground. Hit OK. But keep in mind, you know, you have the ability to apply different types of constraints. One typical thing I've done in modal analysis is applying spring supports, you know, something with an elastic support. So maybe something's not as stiff um, as necessary. You have that uh, within um, uh, the modal analysis tool. All right, so let's solve this. Um, I think, again, if you've, if you've run modal analysis, you'll kind of be kind of like, well, this is really, really cool because modal analysis, like I said, takes a long time to solve uh, because you're, you know, you're 
you know, looking at the equation of motion and solving for these mode shapes and those eigenvalues and those, those eigenvectors. So it typically, like I said, in traditional FEA, this model would take, you know, hours to run. Um, and I'm getting a solution, you know, in less than a minute, which is pretty neat. Uh, so what we see from our results perspective here um, is we see our resonant frequencies. So if I go through this, so another good thing, if, 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 you've, if you're kind of an analyst or you, you're kind of curious, a good way to check if your system's restrained uh, properly is it, with the, within these uh, first six modes is to make sure that your frequency value is not a zero based value. And we see that with all of our frequencies, they're all greater than one or greater than zero. So we know that our system at least is restrained. So it's it's an equilibrium. Um, so I can click on these. Um, note, it will go through the animation. So remember how I was animating and I just clicked on the different mode shape, it jumped to that next animation, which is nice. Um, I can still change and smooth things out. So you can have a much nicer view. And again, this displacement magnitude, this is uh, in relation to the mode shape. It's not, you're not running a stress and displacement analysis. This is a modal analysis. So it's just showing you how much a location is going to oscillate in, in relation to the rest of the system. Uh, you know, these resonant frequency values tend to be very handy uh, for uh, an analyst. So great, uh, we got our solution here. That's one really cool module we can run within cloud. Um, let's jump to another type of study here. So again, see all, see all my library starts to populate. I get these additional uh, studies here. It also tells you the status. If it actually solved properly, you know, it's going to tell you that the study solved and it's going to tell you um, it's going to retain these results. So that's kind of cool. If I wanted to go back to my pull up bar, you see how I did that and just double clicked. I could just go to my results now and right there. So note, I didn't have to save anything. Everything is being automatically saved to the cloud. So I can actually just jump to results or different studies. I think that's the other really cool thing about this tool is you're not worrying about you know, data management. Everything's being done on the cloud for you. All right, so let's go to our, our dashboard and let's go to a final project here. Let's actually take a look at thermal analysis. I'm gonna hit add project and I'm gonna jump here to this third parasolid I have. And again, you'll see it's loading. Um, the other really cool thing about this is if you have certain data issues with your CAD, it will give you an error and tell you like, hey, maybe you have a, a corrupt CAD file. So that's the other kind of cool thing about this is it, 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 it kind of leverages things that were built into desktop. You know, one of the things in desktop is if you have a, a corruption in your CAD, it will actually tell you when you try to open it, the same thing in the cloud-based version. All right, so we just have a coffee mug here. We're gonna run a basic thermal analysis here. Um, and first thing, let's uh, apply our material here. Let's do, uh, maybe this is a copper mug. Let's see, we all know copper mugs, you know, if you're in a bar, uh, the Moscow Mule or what have you, they're, they're great conductors. So let's kind of see what the temperature is gonna be for a copper mug. I'm gonna hit apply. This is a single model part, so I don't need to apply connections. Uh, I believe, yeah, it's just, it's just one part, so we don't need to apply connections. Um, and then if we go to our analysis tab, let's click on thermal. All right, so the, the cool thing we can do is we can actually apply our boundary conditions here. Like I said, it's not a CFD based tool, it's an FEA based tool. Um, traditionally, if you're worried about radiation, you, you're probably gonna jump to CFD for that. So keep in mind, you're not looking at radiation, you're looking at you know conduction and convection within some solid and, and most uh, FEA based tools. So in our case, let's apply temperature. Um, uh, we're gonna apply 60 degrees, which is about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that's probably, you know, around kind of a typical coffee temperature. You know, I, I didn't, I'm not gonna put boiling coffee in here. We're just gonna do kind of a, a typical temperature for coffee, so 60 degrees. Um, so that's our temperature. And what we just applied is they're, they're fixing a temperature on these faces, because that's what the, the, the coffee is being poured in at. But we're also going to apply convection because this coffee is sitting out um, on a table and we're gonna see, see if the convection effects are gonna cool the cup or you know, if it's still gonna be hot. All right, so I'm gonna hit convection. Um, our ambient temperature is going to be 22 degrees. One of the cool things is if I hit add tangent faces here, 
And if I click on it, it, you'll see one or more tangent faces cannot be added to the list as another condition has already been applied. Oh, okay, great. And you'll see that the two interior faces aren't being applying that, that convection condition because we've applied a fixed temperature condition. And if you're applying a convection condition, that temperature could be subject to change. So SimSolid Cloud knows like, hey, we've already applied a boundary condition on those interior faces. But this allowed me to apply all these other faces without having to manually click them. So that's kind of a, a pretty cool tool. And also it recognizes if you've already applied a boundary condition to other faces. Um, our ambient condition here, ambient temperatures is 22 degrees C. And then our convective heat condition, if I want to change this to Fahrenheit, you can. I'm, I'm just going to work in Celsius. And uh, 13 watts per meter squared Kelvin is our, our heat transfer coefficient. All right, so we see that we've applied our convection condition and our temperature condition, um, and then we can actually solve the system. Um, currently uh, within some solid cloud, it's just a uh, steady state thermal solution. Um, if you need transient, you can jump into desktop for that, uh, but currently within cloud, it's a steady state. All right, so we see what our temperature values are. Uh, the cool thing about this is we can also adjust to go to thermal flux, and we can also go to um, a thermal gradient if we want to. So we see our thermal flux right here. Um, let's go back to our temperature value here. Okay, so it's doing a pretty good job. Um, this cop, which we kind of expected with a copper cup. I mean, it's it's dropping a little bit. It's dropping down to you know 59C, but it really lost a, a you know a temperature, uh, and I think that's it's not gonna be significant. Um, we also kind of see where the cool spots are on our cup. Um, so it might be advantageous if I'm designing this. And typically if you look at a lot of um, uh, kind of copper mugs, they might have kind of a, a coating on it or maybe the, the handle might be different. We might wanna change that in our design here to make, make sure this, make this handle a little bit, you know, a little bit cooler to the touch. I mean, uh, 60 degrees C isn't crazy, it's 140 degrees, so it'll be hot, but it's not gonna be crazy, but it might be something we might wanna change. Um, the other thing to keep in mind with um, SimSolid Cloud, I, I talked about showing the min and max values, uh, but we can also pick locations, and just by mouse click. So I'm showing the temperature, so just showing me at these specific locations, and, it, and you'll see number one, number two, so this is telling you within the in the list here what these values point to. So 57 degrees. If I go all the way down here, it's like at 56 degrees, uh, which is pretty cool. So we can query results if we want. One of the other really cool things about this is we can also couple results. So I ran a thermal analysis here. So all I'm getting is thermal stress. But um, if I wanted to look at the thermal expansion stress, so how much this is expanding and causing a thermal stress, we can do that. So if I hit add and set structural linear, um, I'm gonna go to uh, first our constraints right here. I'm gonna say an immovable support. I'm gonna say this interior face, that's just what I'm holding. So I'm gonna say that's gonna be locked in place. And then our loads themselves, it's gonna be a, a thermal load. So if I click on thermal load, one of the cool things here is you see, I can hit link the thermal analysis result and it will reference that thermal study we just ran. So if I click on it and hit okay, it's automatically gonna map those temperature loads um, for the entire system. And then I can solve for a thermal expansion stress. So if I hit solve right here, um, I've already run the thermal study. I don't need to rerun that again. So I'm just gonna run the structural study and hit solve. So again, I'm doing this all in the cloud. Uh, we'll see it solving in real time down here at the bottom. Uh, but this gives me my results. So pretty cool. Now I can actually see what my stress value is going to be. Um, and again, I mean, if you look at most failure points on cups, uh, you know, kind of the attachment to the handle. I've had a number of coffee cups break at the handle location. If you're doing a like coffee mug design, um, you know, uh, like I have a, you know, it's something that you might want to beef up accordingly. So we see kind of critical stress values. Um, I can kind of click these locations and see what they are. But remember, this is all directly coupled from the thermal analysis, which is pretty neat. I can, so if I change the speed as well, you can kind of see as I start to kind of change this, I can change my animations um, to be very quick or very slow, how I want to move them. 
um, and also, uh, you know, being able to kind of control and pick these values. Um, a couple other things I'll point out. Um, so uh, there's a number of pre-built views like you would in a, in a CAD based tool. So we can go to isometrics. Um, you can also adjust things by your mouse, your, your left mouse button, but it gives you kind of the ability to kind of move and, and work your way through this. I, most users I, I've talked to have utilized the tool can kind of get up and running very quick because of the UI tends to be very kind of forgiving and, and uh, able to set problems up uh, very efficiently. Okay, great. Um, we're almost at the end. Um, a couple of things I, I do want to point out. Thank you for attending. Um, keep an eye out for our blog um, as well as our socials. Um, we're consistently updating our YouTube page. Um, this webinar will actually be posted on our YouTube page. Um, and keep an eye out for you know future webinars and videos. But I'm going to take the last few minutes. If there's any questions, I'm, I'm happy to kind of address any questions any of you may have. Is there any questions in the chat? I'll stick around for a few more minutes if there is any 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 questions. Okay, well, um, I want to thank you all for attending today's webinar. Um, if you do have any questions about anything, um, please reach out to us. Uh, like I said, uh, I'll put my contact information in the chat here. If, if you wanna reach out to me directly, I'm always happy to chat with new customers. But with that being end, I will uh, end the webinar and, and hope you all have a good rest of your day.